Hi, this is Morgan from the podcast. Before we begin, I would like to make a redaction. In episode two of the podcast, I claimed that Mary was my favorite hobbit of the four hobbits of the Lord of the Rings series. That is not true. My favorite hobbit is Pippin. I mix them up sometimes, so pardon me for that mistake. Fuck Mary. I love Pippin. Now let's get on with the show. Cast, the podcast where we talk about movies and whatever else we feel like talking about and yeah so my name is bunny uh i'm your host this uh afternoon early afternoon and say say hello everybody take it away my (laughs) co-host hey uh it's me morgan um yeah, uh, just another, you know, shark bite enthusiast fan, you know, bringing movie talk to you. Um, yay! So, God, I'm always, like, afraid I'm, like, really yelling in the microphone. I really apologize, guys. I get a little excited. Uh, anyways, um, so- It's okay. If- I always, like, edit the audio so it's not too loud. Don't oh, worry. Oh, thank you. I try to monitor it, but, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so- we're going to be doing something a little different today. Um, yeah, so usually, um, if you're new to our podcast, uh, we usually talk about horror movies or, like, really bad movies, things like that. Um, but today we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, we're going to be discussing the most recent Thor movie, Thor Ragnarok. Um, and uh, before we get into that, though, um, as you guys if know... If you think about it... Isn't the scariest thing the fact that there is life on other planets? Da-da-da. I think that's I I think it's really interesting. Like I I don't know. I definitely I don't know. I think there's something going on out there. I really do. Like I hope so. I hope so too. Hey, can you hold on a second? Yes. Yeah, my cat uh I'm recording in the attic right now. <laughs> And my cat is just at the door meowing and Aww. missing me, and it's so sad. This is so sweet. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so, um, you hope there's life on other planets? Yeah, I do. Especially I- if it's, like, uh, blonde and buff and <laughs> dad-like or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, that'd be nice. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh let's go out into space and find Daddy Planet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Um okay, so as you guys know, uh it was uh so we're recording this the day after Thanksgiving and yesterday was Thanksgiving. So we so um Morgan, how was uh how was your Thanksgiving? What'd you do? Um I ate food with my family. Um Thankfully, political talk didn't get too bad. The worst it got was um, one side of my family was telling my brother to get a vasectomy, and the other side of the family what? was telling his wife to get her tubes tied. That's how does that even like get started? Like a conversation like that? I I don't know. I really don't know. Um, yeah, it went all right. Like, uh, I. I I had an okay time, all things considered. Um, I ended up making two pecan pies for the family dinner because my aunt was like, hey, we got some real pecan fans coming and we need that much pie. And hey, guess what everybody uh, ate at the party? The sea salt and caramel brownies that someone made instead of the pie I made. 
I do have to say that sounds amazing, but I, I'm really sorry about that. I get like offended sort of, or I get my feelings hurt easily um, if I make something and I bring it to like a social gathering of some sort and people aren't really eating it. And I know it's not because they don't want to eat it. It's just like, there's other things there and they just, I don't know, they're just not as focused on it, but I'm still like, guys, eat my thing. I work so hard to make. So I, I don't know how you felt. I feel bad. I feel bad if I fix something and it turns out that people didn't like it. Like, um, I remember for one of your parties, I made this, like, apple crumble thing and barely anyone touched it. And I was just like, uh. I don't think it's because people didn't like it. I'm Yeah, like, honestly, it was like a pool party, so who, like, I don't (laughs) know, it wasn't as, uh... Um, I guess pool friendly. And also you had it in like the, uh, dining room where nobody was hanging out. I know. Yeah. Cause like at my, at my Halloween party, like there's a lot more people that are like eating in that nice dining room area. But I, I remember that specifically for the pool party. Like, I don't know. People just weren't really going in that room. So I think that's why, but trust me, it's not because you don't, I've tasted your cooking. You are an amazing cook. So that's not the reason why. I really, really thoroughly enjoy your eats. Aw, thank you. Um, But yeah, speaking of pecan pie, uh, my mom made uh, a pecan pie. uh, And she put, uh, let me tell you, that's the most boozy pecan pie I have ever (laughs) had. Like, I'm like, and my my mom is so, like, not an alcohol person. Like, she... She goes to a restaurant and she orders a virgin mojito, which is literally uh. like mint leaves and soda water. <laughs> uh, I would, I would try that, but I, I don't know. I would rather just have the regular mojito. Yeah, I mean, me, me too. But I just think it's funny because she's very like non-alcohol. Yet she, like, I've. I've tasted other baked goods that were kind of, like, you could taste it, but, like, never a pecan pie. She just, like, something, she said, like, the nuts, like, really soaked up the alcohol, it was the bourbon, it was, she put uh, Maker's Mark in it. Um, Ooh. But uh, it was good, though. <laughs> um, I, I ended up putting rum in the uh, pecan pie I made, and just, like, uh, a tablespoon. I don't know how much your mom used in the pie. I don't know. I mean, it looked like she used, she got like a small, like a, um, not, not a, like a little tiny mini bottle, but, uh, like uh, a five ounce bottle or something. I think so. Sort of like that. And she used like a third of the bottle. So she didn't use that much. I don't think. But anyways, um, yeah, so pretty much, uh, my Thanksgiving was kind of similar. We just ate with some of my family and a couple of friends of my, um, parents. Um, but it was, it was really nice. And there was, there was a lot of food. And I helped my mom with the cooking. Um, well, that's nice. Yeah. I, I don't mind making a lot of food because a, I enjoy cooking. That's a recent yeah. thing. So I'm still, I feel like I'm still kind of in the, um, I, I'm excited to cook. You know what I mean? Like, I hope that doesn't go away too quickly to where I'm like, Ugh. like, I know how to cook, but I just don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, uh, this whole week I was looking forward to Thanksgiving just so I could cook something nice. Yeah. Well, Hey, if you, uh, still have that pie, I mean, I'll eat some, I'll eat two. <laughs> well, Half of the pie eventually got eaten, but I have, like, a whole pie sitting in the freezer, and I'm taking it to, like, another thing a a friend of ours is having. Oh, cool. Uh, So, yeah. That'll be good. The the people will eat it, for sure. Oh, I hope so. (laughs) Um, okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and move on to the movie talk. Um, I'm not sure. Should we talk about what the movie was first, or should we talk about our feelings about it first what do you want well to do? it would be interesting to talk about the movie without naming it or talking or mentioning what it's about and just talking about our feelings which is how i just interpreted your prompt right there like oh this movie it made me laugh and uh, <laughs> it's oh ah, oh you know? oh 
That was that was my feelings about the movie. Oh, ooh, ah, <laughs> ah. I'm throwing like, yeah, some we could just home use... improvement grants in there somewhere. Yeah, we could just like talk about like what our feelings and just uh, if you're listening, uh, that's. Th- because like other people's other po- people's podcasts, I hear so a lot of them don't even talk about like what the movie is about. They just assume the viewers have like watched it or or listeners. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about streaming, and so I I tend to say viewers, listeners. Uh, some people like to watch the waveform as it goes by, <laughs> so just think of some of them as viewers. I guess that's true. Like watching, like you know those audio. um, you know those audio like. Um, visualizations things they have built into some mp3 players they could have that running in the background i guess that's true uh that's that would be an interesting type of person that would do that (laughs) oh (laughs) okay um so i'm for those who don't know if we didn't mention it earlier we watched thor ragnarok yay (laughs) <laughs> it's the third movie in the Thor franchise, and it's like the ninety seventh movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> right? maybe. Yeah, it's can't have enough Marvel movies. No, not at all. Um, I I don't know. I'm kind of getting tired of them at this point. Like, like you're just yeah. getting, Um, uh, what's the word? Like fatigued. Maybe Is that what you're thinking of like you're just you're over. There's just such a saturation of them constantly, and I mean they're good because they're obviously like blockbuster movies, but they're they're all sort of similar. Like they all kind of have like a similar kind of thing going on. Like, yeah, uh, like, like main plot. Because even with this one, as much as I loved it, like I really loved it, it still kind of had like the typical plot. But yeah, I don't know what you're. I mean what your thoughts are even like uh basically like part of the movie sort of repeats some of the ideas in the first thor movie about like uh thor getting exiled to another planet to a degree but yeah i didn't even think about that but yeah you're right yeah um yeah so did you want to share your thoughts or did you want me to go for like 20 minutes (laughs) non-stop Um, I mean, we could just bounce back and forth, like, you know, like, I talk about something, and you, and if you have, like, a comment, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, okay, my overall, my overall thoughts were, honestly, this was my favorite, like, of the, all the Thor movies. Um, I, like, I, I will say the first Thor movie is actually my least favorite, because I really love all the, uh the Asgard like mythology and the fantasy aspect that's why I love the Thor movies and Thor is the whole Viking like fantasy elements and that's why I really like the second one is they were like a lot more of it took place in Asgard um and uh and this third one was like had even more of I don't know fantasy elements and more focus on it and I really like that um and it was it was definitely more humorous than the other ones. It wasn't as serious, which can be a good or a bad thing. I mean, it was it was a lot more comical and funny. But I personally enjoyed it. I I just I like that. I'm not a huge. You're not. You guys are not going to get like this like in depth movie critique from me. I'm not a very critical person either. It's it's entertaining to me and I like it, or I, it's not. So. It was it was uh, very enjo- enjoyable uh, as far as like entertaining and funny and all that. Uh, what what are your thoughts, Morgan? Um, yeah, I thought it I thought it had a good balance of humor and sort of um, like you know just stuff going on with the characters, like and s- some storytelling, like. Uh, I think one of the reasons uh, it benefited so like it it was the funniest is um, the director for this movie uh, whose name I believe is Weka Latiti I could be I could have butchered <laughs> that completely <laughs> fuck I'm surprised Anyways, you even know the director's name wow he um, he has a lot of experience with comedy and sort of that dramedy um, 
a genre of drama and comedy. So I felt like his experience with that paid off, uh, in this movie. Um, for those who d- of you who don't know, um, he worked on such movies as Bear vs. Uh, Shark and uh, my favorite vampire film, <laughs> What We Do in the Shadows. You, that's um, your favorite? That's your number one favorite vampire movie? I, It's funny, okay? <laughs> and it's, it's funny. Like, I don't know. Like, okay, hold on. Kiss of the Damned is a really good vampire movie. There you go. But one of my favorite vampire movies is What We Do in the Shadows. Have you seen it? Uh, yes. Uh, it's been a while. Um, I just, I, I think I remember I, I liked it, but I didn't, like, love it, is my thoughts. So that's, ah. I think that's interesting that you're, like, that's, like, one of your top ones. Well, yeah, um, I don't know. My film tastes are a little weird sometimes. Woo! Um... <laughs> That's yeah. good, though. They're different. But yeah, he worked on those. So also, he's, he's worked on some other stuff, and he's also collaborated with the comedy folk band Flight of the Concord. So he has experience working with comedy and drama, and I felt like um, he brought his expertise to this movie. And I liked it a lot better than the Guardians of the Galaxy type of humor, you know? Like... What do you mean by that? Um, uh, I don't know. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy, the humor in there, it's sort of just, like, sometimes it undercuts the serious moments that are happening in the movie, and I don't know. I felt like in this movie, it didn't, like, the director didn't do that as much, you know? I think I know what you're talking about. Like, uh... Like when um, Thor runs into his dad and, um, like, uh, he still thinks his dad is under Loki's spell. Like, Loki's like, it's not me. And (laughs) instead of doing something like, oh, he's lost his marbles or something. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That's just a weird example I came up with. Whatever. Um, Oh, you know who I really loved in this movie? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, give me a hint. I want to try to actually guess this. Um, or is it gonna give it away? Yeah, I'm. I, I hold on. Um, she's a woman. There you go. It, okay. There's uh, like two women in this film, so good luck finding out which one. <laughs> what was it, Hella? Yes. Okay, because I was thinking like I. That Ugh. was one hot milf. Oh my gosh. Ugh. You can't see it, but I'm slumped over in my chair. Oh. <laughs> Did you do that thing where you like slide down and you're just like, oh man. Like No, I just I just tilted over to the side because if I slid out I would end up knocking a bunch of stuff around in the attic and ah. I I can't have that. Um Oh my gosh, she's so great. <laughs> she did a really good job, yes. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> what are those noises? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, excitement, bubbly feelings. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, she was cool. Um, and I don't know. It was interesting. Like, hey, Thor, Loki, did you guys know you have a sister? <laughs> and I lied about it the whole time. Uh, sorry. She's gonna come back when I die. <laughs> Yeah, that that whole thing was really interesting. Uh, wh- now I don't know much about the comics, so was is all of this like no knowledge from the comics that they had like a sister and her character and everything? Is is she from the comics? Do you know? She okay. So I'm not a big uh comic book uh buff, but from what I know about Marvel is Hella is a character within the series and she is like the goddess of death. And I'm not, I don't think she's related to Thor and Loki. I think that's something they did for the movie because okay. they want to set her, they wanted to give her an entrance into the, the Marvel cinematic universe because she's going to be important for the, uh, Avengers infinity war plot because, um, 
uh, Thanos, the big bad guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, um, he's collecting these Infinity Stones because he's in love with Hela, and I think he wants to impress her or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, you want to know who my favorite character was? <laughs> oh, oh, um, I don't, this was is- it? I don't know. I feel like was this... it Jeff Goldblum? Yes. <laughs> God, <laughs> he was pretty great. He was so funny. Like, God, it's so weird because it's like I don't, he has. Uh, so I mean, uh, most people associate him like. Well, I I don't know about most, but like I usually associate him with like Jurassic Park. Um, and I've been watching more things about him recently, like. Uh, just have you been watching those like videos of him talking about like people's reactions to him yes and him yeah, talking like about the, like twitter and tattoos like, and shit yes and he's actually like a real he's he he's got an eccentric person he's like he's kind of eccentric like anyways like he's kind of funny and i don't know he's got an interesting personality so seeing how he was uh in the movie that was really funny. And one thing, um, I, I went and saw the movie with my mom and she really loved him, of course. Um, and one of the things we were talking about was how cheap his outfit, like for him being like the ruler <laughs> of that planet, his outfit was so cheap looking compared to everyone else's. <laughs> and I don't know, it was just like a lot of little things. Um, <laughs> and uh, God, I just, I loved his acting. It was so he was so weird and eccentric and it was great um and what so go ahead I did, what were you gonna say uh i was gonna say like uh we were talking about how quirky and stuff he is i wanted to share this story i read on twitter about how like one time he was on a plane with someone and that person was like next to him reading a book and he turns to them and he's like Hi, I'm Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> if you like, I have a wonderful reading voice. And if you like, I could read the rest of that book for you. <laughs> and this person took him up on his offer and he read a book to this woman <laughs> just to pass the time and entertain her. On an airplane? Yeah. Where did you... I just, was that a real... Th- was this like on Reddit or something? No, I, I I read it on Twitter, and I'm pretty sure that's a legit thing he did, because that sounds like something he would do. Like, hi, I'm... <laughs> I can picture that I'm perfectly. a quirky, entertaining guy. <laughs> and also, for, him, for her to not, like, recognize him, I guess she didn't, she didn't know who he was. Well, maybe it was a thing where, like, she was, like, just showing him some respect and not bothering him on the plane, you know? Like... Oh, yeah, me... I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, um, but I would love for him to read to me. That would be great. Like, uh, yeah. I would totally love for him to read to me. Like, he would be so good at that. He should do audiobooks. I could imagine, see him. Imagine if he read Brie Tanner to you. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think it would be m- more funny if he read, like, the Twilight books because of the interactions between, like, the way that Belle and Edward and all of them talk to each other, how, like, dramatic they can be, like, because, because, like, we were saying, we thought, we both, like, Brie Tanner more than <laughs> the actual Twilight books, so, but, yeah. I mean, I was still, like, totally, like, he could read me, he could totally read me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, um... I really liked him in this movie, and uh, you mentioned, like, uh, the Jurassic Park thing. Did you know that one of his co-stars from Jurassic Park was in the movie as well? No, what? Sam Neill, who plays, like, the main guy in Jurassic Park, the doctor with the hat, yeah. and he's like, I hate kids, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I'm gonna protect these kids. He play like... In the movie Thor Ragnarok, he plays the theatrical version of Odin in the play they have at the beginning of the of the tragedy of really? Loki's death. Really? Oh my god! Yeah, that's what? Sam Neill. That's cool. I would have never and to known give, that. And to give you uh, just a little taste of the other people in that play, the actor Matt Damon is playing Loki, 
And oh, uh, I, uh, I knew. Okay, okay. When that scene was going on, like the fake, the play or whatever, I, I, I was like watching the the actors in the play. I was like, they look familiar, but I couldn't figure out exactly who it was. But they looked familiar. And Chris and um and the person playing Thor in that play is Chris Hemsworth's older brother. Liam? No, Liam's the younger one. Uh he has an older brother that uh ended up coming in to play uh his brother's character in this fictional play in the movie and yeah. Just a little meta humor there. Okay. Okay, so yeah. no Matt Damon, that I definitely recognize him as playing Thor loki now yes that's yeah. really cool um yay fun facts <laughs> yay uh um, so uh, a big spoiler alert uh which i really enjoyed thoroughly was uh doctor strange being in the movie having a cameo kind of thing yeah I, was that a spoiler i don't know like i I don't know. I just said that just in case because I had no idea he was going to be in the movie. Actually, um, he was, they, they sort of teased it at the end of, uh, the Doctor Strange movie, I think. If you watch the post credit scenes, he's actually talking to Thor and they use some of that footage in the Ragnarok movie. Oh. Wait, yeah. Which, which movie? Uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Now that I remember yeah. it, but uh, yeah, I was I that t- still that took me off took me off guard. By the way, if I'm typing, uh, I apologize if that's like loud. I'm just like looking things up as we're talking about him, um, to like get some visuals. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I he wore gloves. What? Doctor Strange in this movie, he wore gloves compared to them just showing off his gnarled hands in the Doctor Strange movie. Okay, yeah. I I, I guess that was to, you know, cut out some of that makeup work. And I guess you don't need to know the backstory about his poor mangled hands in the Ragnarok movie. Okay, uh, yeah, that's an interesting um, thing you noticed. Um, I did like the little scene between um, Doctor Strange and Loki where um, Loki's like, uh, two bit sorcerers <laughs> telling me what to do. And Doctor Strange is just like, bye bye. Whoosh. Yes. I just love that whole scene in general. That was really <laughs> funny. And like, just him transporting Thor around and like how he kept, he just kept like refilling his beer i love that and uh, it was just really great i and i love doctor strange that's honestly one of my favorite marvel movies uh again just because i love the whole like fantasy like mystical stuff um with it yeah another thing i really liked was um it like thor um he's getting teleported around and he's knocking stuff over because doctor strange is being a dick (laughs) and uh thor's like um, well, Doctor Strange is like, don't forget your umbrella, and Thor just, like, summons his umbrella, like, his hand yes, that looks like an umbrella house. right now, and he's just like, uh, sorry. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Oh, what did you think of Thor's new haircut? God, I love it so much. I mean, like, yeah. I love his long hair, too, but I really like his short hair, too. It's super cute. Like, both is really cute. <laughs> And I, Did you like the etched patterns he had okay, going on? Okay, so with the whole, like, like designs in his head, I couldn't tell if those were on purpose, like, they were supposed to be designs, or if they were supposed to just look, like, messed up. Like, he got a bad haircut. Do you know could, which I it is? think it was supposed to be indicative of a bad haircut, but I think they tried to, like, sort of ride the line where... Thor's got a new look, and it includes, um, like, you know, etchings in his hair. I think they were trying to do a little bit of both. Okay, I liked it, though. It's it's cool. Like, it was, even though it was kind of weird looking, it was still cool, because I love, like, designs and all that. Yeah, I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be, if it was, like, lightning or what. I don't know if you noticed what it was. Uh Uh-uh. I, yeah, I can't tell. The, um, this actually, this movie, 
So this movie made me really like Thor more because, I mean, I already liked him, but I like both him and Loki. So in the previous movies, Loki definitely had more, like, personality, and that would be the only reason why I would maybe favor him over Thor. But one thing I really liked about this movie, like, it legitimately made me really like Thor more because of how, like, funny it was. So it, like, gave him a lot more personality and he was just adorable, and I love that. <laughs> yeah, um, he definitely shined a lot more in this movie versus the other movies, where, like, in the first one, he's, like, this, you know, kind of guy who's just, like, oh, I'm ready to rule everyone, and <laughs> yeah. let's shed blood and shit, and then he learns his lesson about, oh, you know, peace and moderation are, you know, things to, uh, you know, aspire for sometimes. And uh, in the second movie, I don't know what's going on. He's just like, I don't want to rule the throne. And then in the third one, he sort of comes to the end of his journey where he realizes that he has a role to play within, like, um, you know, leading, um, you know, his people forward into space, and, uh, yeah, it's a nice little arc for him. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, so I'm like, oh, oh, no, you know who, (sighs) one of my, one of my mom's favorite characters in the movie actually was Carl Urban. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Strack, I think was his name. I never even caught his name, so whatever you say, sure. No, it Sturgis? Strum? I don't know. His name started with an S, whatever. Yeah, it started, so, I, yeah. Yeah, Carl Urban, um, I don't know. He was okay in this movie. I, like, he wasn't bad, but I don't know. I kind of, like, seeing him made me want to watch other Carl Urban movies, if that makes any sense. That does make sense, yeah. Like, two of my favorite Carl Urban movies is Doom and the Dread movie they did in 2012, I think. I haven't seen either of those. I've only seen, like, Star the Star Trek movie, I think, that he's in. He was also in Lord of the Rings, by the way. Wait, What? Yeah, that? both him and the actor who played Hela were in Lord of the Rings. Who? What characters did they play? Uh, so the actress that plays Hela, she's like Galadriel, you know, the one who's like, "Oh, Frodo, if I were to take the ring, I would do awful things with it." You know that uh, elfy woman, and Carl Urban, he played like. Boromir's brother who showed up in Return of the King and he ends up like his father sends him into battle and he ends up coming back wounded and the guy's like my son is dead I'm gonna burn him alive you know I'm just gonna look this up right now (laughs) go for it uh let me know the name of the actress who plays uh Galadriel by the way I can't remember her name oh 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 okay yes I know him I know his character uh, and then Hella played Galadriel. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I see it. Was that actress? Yes. Okay. Yeah, What's... I can definitely see the res- like resemblance. What's the actress's name? If you know it, uh, if you have Kate it pulled Blanchett. Up? Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was pretty. I liked her in that movie. Oh, by I'm the gonna, way, I can't. Huh. I can't stop. I can't start thinking about Hella again. I, I just can't. <laughs> You're gonna get too riled up. Yeah. Ooh. Oof, oof, oof. By the way, what? Oh, uh, have you seen all of the new Stranger Things? I have. Um, did you find the meme of uh, Pretty versus Bitchin? Wh- what? No. <laughs> uh, so there's this sort of um, like. In Stranger Things season one, uh, Eleven, she puts on the wig and the dress and she looks in the mirror and she's like, pretty. And in uh, season two, she, like, the gang makes her up and she's got, like, wearing all black and she's got her hair slicked back and she's like, bitchin'. And someone uh, pulled (laughs) up a picture, like, put a picture of uh, Galadriel and Hella side by side and captioned them the same way, pretty versus bitchin'. Oh my god. (laughs) Can you send that to me? (laughs) 
I'll I'll try to um after we get done with the podcast, yeah, I'll send that to you. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, the reason I brought it up was like when as that was just like such an exciting moment when it hit me that uh Bob's character was uh Samwise from Lord of the yeah. Rings because I was like I know who this is who it? and then it was like one of those oh moments I'm like oh my god that's so cool yeah that just made me happy he um, seems like a spoil- character you would like I I thought he was nice like in Stranger Things I I expected Bob to be like secretly um an undercover agent for the scientist you know agency what? or whatever. That's... Uh-huh. And when he wasn't, I was so happy because like you know, um uh Winona Ryder deserves Bob. Yes, she does, man. Like I guess the whole point of it was she like, you know, to get her closer to Hopper. But it's too bad because they had like a really like they were a really great healthy couple like and man. while Bob was very suspicious about what was going on at first he supported um what's her name all the way through yeah like, with all the cra- like having all that serious crazy stuff going on yeah he still was just okay and going along with it and, and helping them yeah yeah I'm uh tragedy tragedy Ugh. when when the podcast just turns into a stranger things one yeah um <laughs> i don't know that's the theme right i said yes yeah, something pretty much that's yeah, good as so i welcome can do. to our stranger things podcast uh <laughs> Let's let's talk about people sexualizing 14-year-olds and how it's wrong. Oh my god, I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> uh, yeah, let these kids just live. Yeah, know? really. Ugh. Um what, oh, well, let let's you want to go back to Thor cuz I could talk about Stranger Things. <laughs> I guess we should. We should just discuss Stranger Things on a separate I mean, we could ho- absolutely make a whole podcast about that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Mm, let's see, what else? Um, is there anything else that comes to mind from Thor that you want to talk about? So you said uh, that you didn't like Loki in this movie as much as in the other movies? I, I wouldn't say I... No, I wouldn't say I didn't like him as much. I would just say um, I just... I, I, uh, I like Thor a bit more. Maybe. Yeah, I I felt that Loki, he was just sort of, like, he got caught up in this lie that he was telling from, you know, faking his death, and he was just sort of going along with whatever was happening. I felt like his, uh, his role in the movie was much weaker than in the other ones. Yeah, but I mean, which, yeah, like, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. It's kind of like they switched it, you know, because in some of the other ones, Loki was more of, like, the personality, and there was a lot more with him, and then with this one, it was, like, switched around where it was more focused on Thor and and not not as much with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, uh, what did you think about the Valkyrie? Um, uh, I forget her oh, name. Uh, uh. That's what I thought. Just <laughs> a bunch of unintelligible sighs. Um, no, she was she was cool. Um, I really liked her a lot. Um, and I'm really glad that she got her shit together in the end. You God, know? yes, me too. Yes, yeah. Because <laughs> like, it I... seemed like she was just sort of passing by time on the planet they were on, which was. Uh, I don't know the name of that planet. I'm going to say it's Straxus or whatever. You're, I don't you're, know. It starts with Yeah, you have a better memory than I do. That's why I'm, like, looking to you to remember the names of things. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. The Valkyrie was cool. What did you think of the Willy Wonka sequence in the movie? <laughs> oh, my God. I love that so much. Honestly. That was so great. It was great. pretty cool. 
I I really <laughs> that was really funny. I, I just tied in with the whole crazy thing with Jeff Goldblum's character. That was weird. It was. I mean, there was a lot of like just kind of weird, different things in this movie, definitely than the other ones. But I mean, I pretty much I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, moments in the movie, as far as, like, comedy, uh, was uh, the sort of, like, attendant, uh, the woman who travels with Jeff Goldblum, who's always, like, shitting on everyone while he's just sort of like, oh, no, these people are cool, whatever. Yes! Um, She's holding the death stick or whatever, and she accidentally points it at him at one point, and he's like, whoa, 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 watch out with that thing, and... (laughs) Apparently that was like ad libbed, and I really liked it. That's cool. I yeah. liked I liked her character, and I liked their whole like because he's just such a like weird. Um, I don't know floozy. I, I don't know what word would be best to describe him. And she's eccentric, this very tough, serious character. And I love how it's called the Death Stick. That's well, funny. Melty Stick, Death melty stick. stick. I don't remember which one it is. Yeah. Just, like, come up with, like, the most ridiculous name for it. It just all fits. Oh, I just remembered something. Um, What did you think of uh, Hulk and Bruce Banner in this movie? Um, I thought that, I thought it was fine. I thought it was cool. Um, Like, the whole thing with him having to uh, transform or having, I guess, like, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about his character or like Hulk's character and all that. Um, I didn't, yeah, I would not have known that it was possible for him to, ha- to stay in his Hulk form for like an extreme extended period of time. Yeah. Um, that's actually like a thing that they pulled from the comics. Like part of the movie where they're on the planet with the, uh, gladiatorial arena contest is in a comic book series called Planet Hulk, where oh. he, like, a bunch of Marvel superheroes send Hulk away to space because he's too much of a danger to the planet. And he ends up, like, landing on this planet where he becomes a gladiatorial warrior and he takes over the planet and he's the Hulk the whole time. Dang. And I'm pretty sure they drew his dick at one point in the comic. Yeah. Okay. Um,. And in the, uh, so yeah, that was one of the elements they took from that and sort of incorporated into Thor Ragnarok. Okay, that's cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, the basic backstory for, uh, Hulk, if you wanted to know, was, um, he's basically a scientist who is working with gamma radiation and he's kind of trying to recreate the results of, um, like the super soldier serum Captain America had. And, um, like he gets hit with a dose of gamma radiation and suddenly he turns into this green, uh, monster when he's angry. Okay. That's the story. Also, the government wants to capture him and experiment on him. Sure. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought it was funny the, after he transforms out of, out to his regular Bruce Banner self, like, when they're in that festival. And, oh my god, when Thor is putting the little, cl- like, cloth over his head. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Like, the Valkyrie runs into him, and she's, she's like, uh, you need a disguise. And he just drapes the scarf over his face, and he's like, I have a disguise. Like, that's the thing, like, he just does so many things in this movie that are so, like, adorable and just oh yeah like uh i just remembered with dr strange uh he's like why didn't you tell me my father was on earth and he's uh and dr strange was like well you don't have a cell phone and (laughs) thor's like well what about an electronic letter email and uh uh, (laughs) dr strange is like do you have a computer and thor's like no (laughs) it's like He's he like, kind of gets it, for? but at the same time, he's sort of just like, uh. Yeah. So, but yeah, what did you, what did you think of, uh, Hulk? Um, he looked weird to me. Like, I don't know, like, 
he doesn't ever look too consistent within the movies, so I don't I don't know. Like I I thought it was interesting they like gave him like lines and more of a personality in this movie versus the others where he just sort of transforms and breaks shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh like Bruce Banner um sort of like acting weird and just like because he hasn't been himself in forever was interesting and I I sort of liked the uh thing he had going on where it's like uh I have to control this aspect of myself because if I don't it'll take over me and I may never come back and yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's stuff they could explore in a Hulk movie, but they're never going to do a Hulk movie, so whatever. Okay, I like that though. Yeah. Yeah. I did I did like um him sort of at the end like, finally revealing who he was to Valkyrie in the most, like, just awkward way possible. Like, I'm I'm going to join the fray. And he jumps <laughs> out of the plane, breaks his neck or something, landing on the Rainbow Bridge, and then I he know. transforms. <laughs> he just, like, yeah, I mean, before he transforms and does all that cool stuff, he just kind of, like, like, plops on the, 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 the bridge there. Yeah, it, um, it... It was a pretty good comedy moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, that reminds me, speaking of comedy, the director, uh, I think his name is Taika Watiti. I think I said Waika Latiti last time, but whatever. Um, he actually plays the rock dude in the movie. Oh, really? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, I think but- I knew that. I knew that. Yes, I read that, that the director voiced that character. Oh, my God. I really he, liked him. He did motion really capture, too, too, by the way. He was so cute. Yeah. And, like, how he had his little buddy, the little the little alien buddy. Aww. Yeah, the bug guy with the blades. Yes. And, <laughs> uh... He he had a he had some pretty good lines and you know he's like you haven't pulled you off what uh and just, I don't know just... <laughs> I love your yeah. um uh what do you impressions the impressions that you do the voices that you do for characters I really wish I could do a Jeff Goldblum impression that would be a good one like ugh yeah that would be awesome yeah. I could see you doing that pretty well. Maybe. It would have to be something I would work on, though. Hmm. Um, well, I guess we should go ahead and kind of start wrapping this up. Um, before Did you have we... anything else you wanted to say about Thor? Um, I think that pretty much covered everything that I can think of. Let's see. Hella. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I think that's everything oh, man, that I wanted to say. Oof. I can't wait to see her come back. I'm sure she will. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was crazy, though, that whole, like... That did make me sad, though, the whole... Well, the whole thing about, you know, the, 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 the prophecy where they have to... You know, that demon monster has to come up and they have to battle in order for them to live and... They had to escape the planet, and the the or the Asgard gets destroyed. But the whole thing, like it's it's the it's the people that matter. So, yeah, you know, I really wonder what if they're gonna make another movie, what how that's gonna work, or where they're gonna go. Well, did you watch the after credit sequences? Yeah, yes. It looks like um, yeah, they had that based- spaceship, that thing that came up. Yeah, so they're going to run into trouble, and then it'll segue right into the next Avengers movie, I think. Oh, you think it'll be part of the next Avengers? Like, Yeah, they had, like, a leaked trailer from, like, Comic-Con or something, and it showed, like, Thor, like, crash landing on the windshield of the Guardians of the Galaxy spaceship. So, yeah, I think something's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, even though you're just saying you're sick of (laughs) Marvel movies. Well, yeah, I'm... The only one I really want to see right now is Black Panther. That one looks cool. uh, Chadwick Boseman. Oh, he's such a handsome man. Oof. (laughs) But I'm looking forward to seeing that one. And other than that, I want to see Star Wars and that's it. Yeah. Yes. Well, 
Okay, so I could just go into all the movies I want to see, but yeah, let's let's not. <laughs> um, we can say we can save that for another time. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I the one thing though to talk about before we uh close it off, close head on out. Um, if you have not downloaded Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, you should totally do it. It's really fun and cute. Uh, if you're a fan of Animal Crossing, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's there's a lot you can do with it. Um, I mean, it's not going to be obviously as extensive as like the regular video games, but I'm literally playing it as we're doing this podcast. I am not going to lie. What? What? <laughs> I'm just sitting here like a chump, and you're um, like making friends with a duck named Ketchup. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I Dang gotta it. craft stuff and, like, build my friendships, okay? I have, th- I have things <laughs> to do. <laughs> um, have you been in the yeah, it's yet? really fun, and, um, uh, I don't know how long I'm gonna be playing it for, because I tend to, like, get super into a game, and then I, like, get bored after a couple of weeks. So we'll see. We'll see by next podcast if I'm still playing it. Um, but yeah, hey, that, that's hey. just a little plug in there. Imagine you streaming Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. No, actually, there are people that stream uh, app games. One of my streamer friends, he streams an app game, like, on his iPad. Okay, cool. I'm dead serious. Uh, if no, he plays I mean, one I know of those, there like, are people who do it. Yeah. What does he play? Uh, I don't know, like, how exactly. I mean, I'm sure it's not too hard, but <laughs> technically, yeah, I could but I don't know how interesting that would be. <laughs> I feel like um, uh, Pocket Camp, you could probably stream it for 30 minutes at most. And, like, I think it yeah, might you be can't, one of like, those... You can only do so much at a time. Yeah, and I think it would be one of those games where it isn't as skill intense, so you could probably just talk to chat the whole time while you tap away Is... at bugs and friends. I mean, I've been chatting this whole time while playing it, so... I know I can, it'll, it would be easy to, like, juggle the two, yes. Yeah. What have you been streaming lately? I haven't, like, kept track. Were you streaming GTA Five or something? Uh, I had started it, um, uh, but then, like, I'm switching between a couple right now. It's pretty much, like, between that one, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which I never played before, and, uh, Skyrim, which I just finished the main story for Skyrim. Uh, that's the first time I've like done that. Um and I'm now doing the Dawn Guard DLC, the vampire. Oh, cool. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. I hear good <laughs> stuff about the Dawn Guard stuff. Yeah, it's really cool so far. I'm liking it. I mean, I just kind of started it, but um I I chose to be a vampire, so yay. Listen, if I know anything, you didn't choose the vampire life. The vampire life chose yes. you. Yes. um okay well yeah pocket camp exists and yeah check it out it's it's cute and you can give all your money to tom nook yeah exactly why Mm -hmm. not um yeah why not all right i guess we're gonna go ahead and uh end it here i am so awkward about this um yeah <laughs> so i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast hope you guys go you should all go see thor uh, we both really enjoyed it as you can see us talking about it um definitely worth seeing um even if you can't see it in theaters just rent it or whatever um when it comes out what when it comes out it's, yeah it would be a little difficult to rent it right now well you get what i'm saying i know <laughs> Future um, listeners in the year 2019, rent Thor Ragnarok. Re- exactly. Tw- 2019. That's... 2020 is not that far away. That is crazy to think about. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm getting uh, old. Yeah, tell me about it. I turned 31 <laughs> this year. What? I turned 31 this year. Tell me about it. I know. I'm getting old. Um, all right. Well, uh, I guess, uh... Let's see. We're gonna we're gonna do that thing where we tell you where we you can follow us at. Um, you can follow me um, as far as social media goes on uh, Twitter at twitter.com dot com slash 
Mer Bunny. That's Mer M E R B U N N I E. Um, and you can uh, also you can li- uh, well you- right now the podcasts are just on YouTube, so that's where you'll be listening from right now. Um, and we're still we're I'm gonna be putting it on. I- I'm gonna be submitting it for iTunes pretty soon here, so hopefully do that pretty soon. Um. Uh, you can also, I have a Facebook you can follow at facebook.com, uh, slash Bunny also, M-E-R-B-U-N-N-I, uh, Instagram, uh, which is Captain Bunny with an I-E. Um, I also have a Patreon, um, for my cosplay, um, which is, uh, patreon.com slash Captain Bunny. And, uh, uh, as Morgan was saying, I stream, and I stream on uh, Twitch and Mixer, uh, uh, Bunny Mixer? Live, B U N N I E L I V E. And what's Mixer? Mixer is another streaming website. Uh, that's that's all it is. It's like Twitch. It's just another streaming website. It's pretty up and coming. Uh, There's a lot of. Uh, obviously, it's not as many people as Twitch. That's like the most popular. But uh, I've been using it lately, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, because it's it's. Uh, it's got a really great like interface and just um, it's really smooth and it's um, like a lot of people are starting to like people are starting to use it a a bit more and uh, Twitch is just like it's so oversaturated with people and you know there's not as many people on Mixer so um, yeah have you uh, do you have you thought about streaming on YouTube as well I have. Or would that just be too much? It would just be too much is pretty much the only reason. And I think mo- most people are only go, most people go to YouTube mainly for, uh, you know, videos and they're going to be really strict about copyright and like laws and I don't know. I just. Oh yeah, wanna, that's like, right. Cause at the beginning you sort of have like dubstep or whatever playing and yeah. Yeah. So I'm just like not going to bother with it. I've, uh, Twitch has been going well and Mi- Mixer. I've only used Mixer a few times, but it's actually been working out really well. So I'm just going to stick with those two and just post All videos right. on YouTube. Yeah. Sounds good. And where can they follow you, Morgan? All right. So, ugh, if you have to, I can be <laughs> found on Twitter at personal corpse. You can see me tweet things I cook like every eight months <laughs> and you can see me post photos when I go to bed of me with a glitched out face. That's pretty much all I do. Yay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, I hope to see you or God, not see. I hope you all <laughs> listen to, uh, check out our next podcast. Uh, we should have, uh, it's already the end of the month, so probably the next one that's gonna be out is gonna be in December, um, and we'll probably, we're gonna probably do Gerald's Game as our next podcast and go back to horror I movies. hope so. <laughs> so, um... Unless you just don't want to. We can always change it up. Yeah. Creep we can, two we can do whatever out. we want. It's our show. Mwahaha. <laughs> All yeah. right, uh, ho- hope to see you all next time. Everybody have a awesome day. Hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving and we will see you all next time. Yeah, goodbye. The music for this podcast was provided by Hellstar Plus. You can find links to their social media and music by visiting hellstar.plus. Hellstar.plus